Kristen from Whiskey Tangle Farms. We're back with another video to help guide you on your path to self-sufficiency through Katerin's quail, rabbits, gardening, and more. Today, we are going to be butchering some quail. Um, we butcher a lot of quail here at the farm, um, but we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. Uh, we got a custom order, so we're going to be processing them a little bit different. Typically, we do what's called the spatch cock style, uh, where you cut out the spine. Um, and I will preface and say if you're squeamish, this is probably not the video for you. Um, this will be a how-to video. Um, we will um, cull the birds off camera because uh, we can't can't show that uh, per YouTube policies. Um, but then, but we will show you um, once the bird has been dispatched, we will show you how we process it. Um, so we're going to try a couple out ourselves here first. Basically, we're going to be um, like I said, we're not doing the spatchcock style. We are just going to be taking everything out of them. Um, I was talking to one of my friends, Jasmine, um, and I just said that we were going to be hollowing out quail so that they can be stuffed. Um, so this is for the customer basically wants to stuff them um, with some good, good goodies, uh, some good food. And um, so we're going to try something new and bring you along for the journey. While we were getting ready for all of this and getting all of our supplies together, uh, the kids actually came up to Brandon and I and they said, hey, can we can we learn how to do this too? Um, so that was really like a proud parent moment that we were, like that they came to us, we didn't ask them, they, they requested that. So we're really excited to share this with them and this is kind of like a big moment for our family. So um, they'll be doing it off camera and everything, um, but it, it is fun that we're doing it, so I wanted to share that with you guys. But without further ado, we will get started. So we already dispatched the quail off camera, so it is, can't feel anything that we're about to do. Um, basically how we do it um, for this is we just cut its head off. It's very, very quick, it's very, very humane, they don't feel anything. So, um, so I have a hen here, again, um, preface, if you're squeamish, this, you know, now is your time to maybe turn it off because we're going to get all up in there and you're going to see everything. So, all right, here we go. Um, so what I do is I just put the bird on its back um, and then I have the feet towards me um, and then the, the breast up. I guess this part, it doesn't really matter. I'm just getting ahead of myself. Sorry. So what I do is I first actually um, take off the wings and the feet. So I'm going to grab my scissors. And what I do um, with my left hand, because I'm right-handed, I kind of hold this out here. And then you can find, you know, get close as you can to the body. Make sure you don't cut yourself. And then just go for it. So, and then we set that aside for our dog or people use them as treats or training. Um, we gave Nano, Brandon's Great Dane, in training. Um, gave him one while we we're doing this and he loved it. So, oops, I don't know if it's in there. There. Um, and then the feet are also really good for, um, dogs as treats. Um, there is collagen in them, which is good. Um, Brandon's a little bit more knowledgeable um, what's all in there. And then I know the collagen is very useful and used, like if you ever make your own bone broth, um, that's what makes it gel up, actually. Um, so obviously, you know, you want to make sure they're clean and stuff. So we'll, we'll clean them off. But okay, so now that we're done, um, the wings and the actual legs are off, um, but I cut like kind of at their, at their knee. Um, then I put it on its back and I just kind of go up by the breast with my two thumbs and you honestly, she's slippery, just kind of grip and pull. There we go. And it just, it just rips real easy. So then we just pull this back and then you kind of take the pants off. <laughs> or I guess I picture it as pants. Um, and just kind of slide the leg out. Got one. Grab the other one. Oops. There we go. And kind of <clears throat> just get the skin away from the the meat. So um, some people will just cut this off because they say you know there's not a lot of meat on there. I don't know. Um, 
I think that there's enough on there to, you know, it takes you two seconds. So we, we just do it, but to each their own. This is just how we're doing it this time. So, <clears throat> and then the back is a little more tough. My fingers are cold. Um, so what I did was I kind of put my thumb between like, this is the neck, um, between the thumb and the skin, I just kind of pulled. And then we'll just get a decent amount, grip, um, thumb, like kind of by the shoulders and pull. Um, and once I get to the hips, you get, you can kind of grip all the way around here. And then you pull, oops, sorry. Um, it is a little bit more tough, um, like by their hips, by their like tail feathers. Um, so that will stay even when you pull. So then, this is what we got so far. And we'll clean it up and stuff. Yet, we're just kind of doing the, the pre-dressing. Kind of like field dressing, I guess. Um, like if you were to go hunting. Um, so then what I'm going to do is just kind of use my left hand again to kind of hold these tail feathers out of the way. And you can feel like the tailbone here, the spine. And I'm just going to kind of cut like at an angle. Oops, almost cut myself. And um, these, these feathers here uh, stick a little bit when we're at this point. But again, we'll do a little bit more of that inside. So then uh, down here, like under the breast, like at the base, like where the rib cage ends, you just kind of stick your thumb under here and rip. And then now you're in like the cavity, I guess you could say, of the, of the bird. And I kind of put my finger up like close here and just kind of get in as far as I can, stick a second finger up, um, and then I pull out everything that I can. Um, so I start from the front and then kind of scoop toward, back towards the spine and then pull. And for the most part, everything just kind of comes out. So, um... Um, oh shoot. Aw. So usually... That's fine. Usually I try to keep the, the kidneys and the heart for the dog. But I, I got a little too excited with my scooping. Um, but then you can kind of take your finger and try to get the lung out of there. It's kind of difficult sometimes. Um, but we also will clean up some more inside. So we got most of it here. And then we've got the esophagus, so we'll just, or the neck, sorry. So we'll cut this bad boy off. And we'll just kind of stick a finger in and grab um, the windpipe here, the esophagus and all that good stuff. Crop. I think I got that in the first sweep. Actually, it all kind of came out. Usually, I don't have that much luck getting it all out. <clears throat> so, all right. So, we'll just rinse this off in a bucket a little bit. Um, and then I put it in a another bucket and let it kind of sit while we finish up. And then we'll go in and clean up a little bit more. So, all right. Tuned. So, we brought the quail inside. Um, and we're just going to kind of finish cleaning them up because you can't do it all out there. Or I prefer not to. I like having some fresh running water to help us out. Um, so basically, I have the bowl in one side of the sink and then an empty bowl. So the bowl of the quail is in the sink on the right. And then on the left, I have just a regular glass bowl. And I just run water in that so I can kind of dip my knife in there. And um, we have a grapefruit spoon. Um, with like little serrated edges and I just kind of use those two things. So all I do is take my quail um, and then um, some of them, seems like it's the males usually, um, This these feathers will be on the back still. So I just take like this little parry knife or pairing. I'm not sure. I just thought it was parry when I was a little girl. But I think it's pairing. But you kind of get under this like thick extra skin and it usually just peels right off. It's kind of gross but now you don't need to eat around it so it's not gross I guess. Give it a rinse, kind of wash some feathers off. 
and I try to just make sure these outside feathers are all good. But then, some extra skin. Basically, anything that you're like, oh, I don't want to eat that, just take it out. It doesn't have to be perfect, but um, just to kind of clean, clean it up, you know? Um, so... And then um, what I'll do is I'll go in from the bottom and I just kind of, again, just kind of grab some more of the look that's in there. And that, yeah, that's a technical term, look. <laughs> and I'll try to kind of grab what I can with my fingers, just because, I don't know, God gave you fingers for a reason, right? Probably not with the full intention of, you know, gutting quail, but, you know? And then this is where I just kind of, you know, just use your knife or your um, grapefruit spoon, whatever works best. Um, so I don't know if you can see in there, you know, you've got the rib cage here and then um, there's some bright, almost like iridescent -y pink in there. Those are the lungs. Um, so I just kind of take this and kind of scrape and they usually come right out. Um, if they don't, you know, I'll kind of scrape a little with that and then go back in with my hands and try to pull it again and just kind of work back and forth. Um, so it's not like real, not a real science to it. And then, I mean, use the water to your advantage too to, because sometimes you're like, oh, I've got so much more to clean out, but um, you rinse it and you're like, oh, it's not so bad. Um, so then once I'm happy with, you know, you're not going to get every little piece out of there. And honestly, the, the lungs aren't bad for you or anything. But um, once you're happy with the inside here. Almost, sorry. Once you're happy with the inside, um, what I also do is I'll take a finger and go from the bottom and push up. Um, because sometimes after you've done like the neck, um, you know, outside, um, you'll get a little piece of the esophagus is still in there. Um, and yeah, it looks just like a, you know, it's a windpipe. It looks just like a human one. So you'll know it's very rigid. Oh, nope, that's not it. I got this one already, I guess, but, um, I just always make sure I get that too. So dunker again, and then I'll run some fresh, fresh, super fresh water and just kind of let it run through the quail. Make sure we've got no feathers on there. And then I put it over in my other bowl that's off to the side here, just some cool water. Um, and then we'll let those sit overnight to kind of help with like the rigor. Um, some of these that we've already done, um, you know, the rigor is starting to set in. Um, but having them sit overnight before we um, freeze them or sell them will give them a chance to not be like so tough. Um, so uh, we will just bag them up and get them ready for our customer. And um, I hope I hope they like them. So it was fun. It was a fun new experience. We definitely learned some stuff, and I got quicker as I went along with this new method. Um, I definitely prefer the spatchcock method, um, and we can we'll do another video on that so you guys can see what that looks like. And you know, do whatever works best for you, everybody. Um, just do what works best for you, I guess. So. Thank you so much for watching. We greatly appreciate it. Um, please make sure you hit like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share our video. It helps us out. We greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions, um, you can contact us on Facebook or YouTube um, or info at whiskeytinglefarms.net. Thanks. Bye, guys.